All right, we're going to continue with our post-race media availability here now with our race winner of today's Yellowwood 500 at Talladega is Ryan Blaney. Ryan, thank you so much for joining us. A big congratulations on that win. Um, to kick us Thanks. off, just take us through those final laps from your vantage point in, in the car. Yeah, it's just, um, I don't know. I mean, uh, we did a good job of positioning ourselves uh, up towards the front. There, um, you know, after we made a mistake at stage two and kind of lost track position, and uh, we did a really good good job and, and had a good pit stop and, you know, was able to start in the front two rows. And, um, you know, the last restart, I guess, uh, you know, the 36 did a great job. You know, Riley did a really good job of pushing me kind of where I needed it, especially when we were leading the top lane. Um, you know, he hasn't, he hasn't run too many cup races at all. And I think he, the only other speedway he's run is maybe Daytona a, a month ago. So he did a really good job of, of kind of understanding where to, to get on me and, and, and carry momentum. Uh, so appreciate him for that. And uh, I want to say he did a good job. And, and, yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing was – was getting clear to the bottom down the back stretch in front of the 24 to get alongside the four. Um, you know, and that made it to where, okay, now it's a drag race between he and I. Um, and my big, the biggest job too was making sure the 24 didn't get clear. Um, so I kind of had a drag break to make sure the four stayed outside the 24 to kind of make sure one of us won and, and made sure the 24 couldn't jump outside of me and, and made sure I had his help. So. Um, yeah, just a, a neat day, fun day. It's always fun to win these things, and you have to appreciate them because they're so hard to do. And um, we hung in there all day, and, and fun to drag race Kevin there at the end. Um, uh, I, I hate it was had to be us to beat him at his final speedway race, but uh, um, you know, it was definitely fun to, to race with someone like that, especially coming down to the end where it's it gets pretty wild. All right, we're gonna now go to questions. If you have a question, go ahead, raise your hand, and we'll get a microphone to you. We'll start in the middle with Justin. Oh, sorry, middle, right there. Uh, Justin Schuler kicking the tires. Ryan, first off, congratulations. I'm sure you're thrilled you don't have to worry about the Roval. Psyched. Yeah. Um, but what is it with you and Talladega and your wins here being seven thousandths, seven thousandths, twelve thousandths? I mean, usually when people win, they're big wins for you. It's kind of the, obvious, uh, the opposite where it's very narrow <laughs> wins. I don't know. It's not like I plan it. Um, I, <laughs> it's just one of those things. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you just uh, we do a good job here at these plate tracks, you know, and um, of kind of trying to position ourselves towards the front of these things to where you have a shot at it at the end, and that's really all you can ask for. And and sometimes they go your way, sometimes they don't. I mean, sometimes you lose them by five feet, and sometimes you win them by three or three or four feet. You know, we lost the 500 one year by. A handful of feet, you know, we've happened to, to win a couple of these things by a, a combined amount of maybe eight feet. So uh, just one of those things that's tough and, and you just have to try to put yourself in the best spot and, and whether it happens for you or not, uh, you kind of accept it. So. And then you were saying a little bit earlier about you kind of drag racing with Harvick, but go back about maybe three, four laps to go. You and Harvick were working really well in that second lane. Were you surprised that he dropped down after you guys had been working together for the past dozen laps? Um, no, I mean, he was he was trying to figure out what lane was going to be the best, you know, and, and what had more help. And so, you know, I think he was just kind of playing the lane game, trying to figure out which one was going to have the best run and uh, which one was going to be tighter um, together. And, and they were both pretty even, I think. Um, so it was kind of his choice, right, of what you think is coming and which one you don't think is, is kind of – being there, you know, he went up and blocked the top down the back, coming to the checkered, and that opened the bottom up for me. Um, so it's it's one of those weird things. It's you know, you're looking in your mirror, your spotter's talking, and you're trying to figure out which lane has more energy, right? And so you're kind of hopping around trying to figure out what lane is going to help you out more. And um, I wasn't really surprised. I mean, he went that lane kind of surged forward, and he went down to try to block it. Um, so it didn't really surprise me. He just going with the right lane at the time and uh, judgment call really at that point. All right, we're going to come up front to Jordan, right here, all the way to the front. Jordan Bianchi, The Athletic. Uh, that move on the backstretch where you darted from the outside to the inside and kind of split William and, and Kevin, did you know you were clear, or did, was it just a, I'm going here and I've got a hole and i got to go? I, I knew it was going to be close. Um, yeah. I wasn't sure how clear I was. Um, 
I honestly kind of made my move, I think, before Josh said I was clear. Um, so I knew it was going to be tight, but, I mean, that was the only chance to make that move, right? If I if I didn't make it then, I feel like the, that bottom lane would have got there to my left rear, and now I'm, I'm not leading a lane. So uh, just kind of halfway knowing I'm clear and just kind of committing to it. I know this isn't going to change how you did things over the last couple laps, but as you're racing Harvick, are you in the, in your mind at all? You like this 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 is his last time here, this could be his last shot at a victory, or any of those things going through your mind at all? No, no, yeah. no. I, I mean, he's another competitor at that point. You know, I mean, it's uh, uh, that's really the only thing you're thinking about. So, um, yeah, another racer. I mean, it was super fun to race with him, drag it out to the end, you know, down the front stretch with him, and I apologize to some. People, a fan who had his shirt on after the race, I saw in victory lane. <laughs> Sorry, I beat your guy, but um, yeah, just another competitor at that point. Thank you. All right, Jenna, right here up front. Oh, sorry, right there. Jenna Pryor, AP. Hey, Ryan, congratulations. Um, obviously, you're through to the round of eight. That's the practical part of it, but from the mental side of that, um, how much easier does it make this week for you? Yeah, it definitely makes it a lot easier, um, for sure. Uh, you know, but honestly, I thought we did a good job after Texas. You know, I made a mistake, sped, put us in the back, got us in a wreck. And now we're below the cut line. Our group did a really good job of just staying calm, you know, understanding we have two more races left. Just go try to do our job. And whatever happens, happens. Uh, so uh, we did a good job of kind of maintaining our uh, mental stability after Texas. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's just so much pressure off whenever you can win in one of these races in one of the rounds, especially the first or second, it just oh, it just relieves you. Like I talked to William today at Driver Intros, and he's like, this is like the most fun speedway race I'm ever going to have because I don't have to stress about it, right? So you kind of just feel free. Um, so uh, it does take some pressure off. Uh, I mean, you go try to win the race next week for sure, but maybe you can be a little bit more aggressive, mm -hmm. you know, on stages or back. Uh, maybe you flip the stages, try to go win the race, you know, instead of having to go get points in the stages. I, I feel like a lot of guys are going to have to do that if they're on that that agenda of kind of being close to the cut line. So it just kind of changes the way you approach it a little bit too. But, yeah, very relieving, uh, that's for sure. And I'm, I asked Jonathan this. I'm curious your take. You've got this really weird stat. You've only got five um, top five finishes all year but two wins. What do you make of that? Yeah, I didn't know that stat. Um, <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. I don't know whether to like that or dislike it. Um, it's weird, right? Yeah, it's weird. Uh, I, I feel like, yeah, it's kind of been up and down. I feel like we were, you know, really solid until uh, you know, winning in Charlotte and then, say, up to Sonoma. And then we kind of we kind of lost our way a little bit after the break and um, just struggled, uh, you know, to kind of find speed and put together races and making mistakes, whether it's my mistakes or pit road and, um, I feel like we've done a good job as the playoffs have started to kind of managing these races like we need to and kind of getting back on track. So, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. But I feel like we had a, you know, a lot more top fives last year and, and contended for more wins probably, uh, but didn't execute very good. And I feel like this year we've executed pretty good, especially the two-thirds point of this year, and, and that's something to, to be super proud of. And it's definitely shown that we've, you know, done a good job of, of believing in each other and, just doing our job, you know, and uh, so those guys are awesome at that. All right, go ahead. Marshall Smith, same for University. First off, congrats on the win, Ryan. Uh, you're now tied with drivers like Davey Allison and Kale Yarborough for the number of wins at Talladega. Uh, can you speak on, like, what this track means to you and uh, how much it shaped your racing career and love from the fans? Yeah, I love this place. I mean, I, uh, I accepted this place early on in my cup career as a uh, – I feel like two people have two opinions on speedways. Either they love them or they hate them with a passion. And I kind of made the decision, of, I'm going to love these places, and I'm going to accept if something bad happens to me here, right? If you get in a wreck, that's not your fault, right? You're just going to accept it and not stress out about that. And once you kind of put that in your head of you're just accepting that these things can happen here, now you can focus on trying to run well and win, right? You're not worried about all this stuff for coming here, disliking the track, like, oh, I can't stand being here the speedway races are dumb you know it's not really the right mindset to have so i just kind of <laughs> did that early on and and it's you know benefited us uh, mindset wise coming to these places and yeah it means a lot to win here i grew up watching dad race here for a long time uh, i love the area uh, the fans here are spectacular and um 
being able to meet a bunch of people has, has been fun and getting to know a lot of people you know from the speedway also has, has been amazing and um you know just really fortunate to to have uh, good friends and friends here that, that treat me like family so um yeah really spent and i think you appreciate these things more because it's so hard to win at these places you know it's just such a up in the air thing you never know if it's going to work out for you or not so i you have to really appreciate whenever you can win here and and it's uh really really fortunate we've been lucky enough to win here three times but um you know that's uh that's pretty neat that we've you know same as Yarborough and, and Davey, that's that's pretty special. So uh, that's that's pretty cool. All right, uh, there's a lot of hands up. Please be patient. We're going to get to as many as we can in the time that we have. We're going to come up front now to Kelly, Jordan, Shane, and then Stephen. Oh. Right up front here, Kelly. Raise your hand if you think I can you. hear you. If you don't want to wait on the mic. I'm a rule follow follower, oh. Ryan. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, KellyCrandallRacer.com. Ryan, you've been to the round of eight before. The hump has been getting past the round of eight to the final four. Aside from saying execution, is there something about that round that you can focus on, you and this team, to get past that roadblock? Yeah, I think just learning from mistakes. You know, I feel like uh, I've made mistakes. Last year I made two massive mistakes and kept us out of Phoenix, you know. So I think learning from prior experiences uh, is, is beneficial there. Obviously, you need your cars to be fast enough because it gets it gets super tough. And these racetracks are, you know, there's no super speedway, there's no road course. It's like traditional tracks, and um, and then it gets super hard. I mean, you when everything resets, you have guys that have tons of points. Um, today helped us out a little bit, but a couple guys have way more playoff points than us, so that makes it super tough. But no, I think if we can just learn from past mistakes it, and uh, and have our, our cars fast and just you know, not mess up, really. I mean, you have to perform, so I can't believe you took the execution word away from me. But, uh, um, no, I, I think just believe in each other and, and, been, and continue to work. You know, I feel like our cars haven't been quite the speed they needed to be to compete with maybe, like, the 5 or, uh, you know, the 11's been fast. But I, I think we're, we're still working, and it's going to be a big shot in the arm for us. So I'm excited to see what we have for them when we unload in Vegas. So speaking of Vegas and Homestead, you're going to start with two intermediate tracks. You look at your numbers this year, they might be a little bit deceiving. You've, you've got a couple top tens, but then you've got some finishes outside the top 15. So intermediate speed-wise, I mean, how are you feeling about two of those in that round before you even get to Martinsville? I, I mean, I obviously feel good about them. Um, we've been working super hard to try to find this intermediate speed. I, I feel like... You know, we've gotten better. Like, we ran better at Kansas than we did prior. We had a good run going at Texas. Didn't qualify good, but kind of got up through there and was able to maintain. So, I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell until you unload. You know, you're always trying to work on stuff. But uh, you got to have confidence that you're going to unload fast and, and with speed and be able to compete. All right. Jordan, if you'll raise your hand, please. Thank you. And then Shane, you can go after Jordan. Jordan Bianchi, The Athletic. Um, if, if Kevin Harvick hadn't lost uh, Riley Herbst, his pusher at the end, um, do you think Harvick is, is able to – Are you do you think you're still able to hold off Harvick at the end there? I don't know. I haven't really seen a replay of, of how much help uh, the 36 got pulled off of him. Did someone go three wide or something to the top of the 36? I couldn't tell you. Okay, I, I, I haven't seen the yeah. replay. So the 36 spawn, I mean. Oh, did it? Okay. Yeah. I, I didn't know. Yeah, I don't know how that kind of developed. All I knew is that the 24 was pretty close to me, and uh, – I saw the 36 for a second, was maybe a car length off the four. And when the 24 got to me, I felt fairly confident that I could kind of nose ahead um, just because he was pretty tight on my bumper. Um, but, yeah, you never know how, <laughs> how those things work out. I just, you know, made, tried to make sure the 24 didn't get clear in three and four. And then once I knew he wasn't clear and the four was going to be able to box him in, uh, you just hope you get a good push to, to try to – you know, maintain your run and, and make it. Well. Shane Cox, Charlotte Observer. A lot of times in wins, you know, you're leading for the last 10 laps, sometimes leading for the majority of the end. In this case, when was that moment where you kind of realized that you had won? Um, it took a few seconds. I wasn't really 100% sure if we beat Harvick or not. Um, it's kind of a weird race here. You know, I've won the couple of other ones I've won here, we led a lot. Like, we led a lot of laps and kind of controlled the race this one, we didn't really lead much. I mean, like single-digit laps, I think we led. And um, just kind of a different different way. Uh, but we still were up there all day. We just never really, like, controlled the lead. 
Um, it was hard to control the lead, honestly, today, if whoever you were. Um, but yeah, it just it takes you a few seconds when they're that close. You don't really know. <laughs> and Josh uh, confirmed it pretty quick, so that was nice. And what was going through your mind as you realized that you had one? And you know, obviously, usually you kind of know, you're kind of unsure. You know, it's a close one, and then in the end, you actually realized that you had won the race, and you kind of realized after. What was what was that like? Well, you just appreciate it. You know, you understand you did a good job and you put in 500 miles of really hard work to try to get to this spot. And uh, it means a lot when never just, you know, it, it comes to fruition. So just uh, super cool. I was debating whether to do a burnout or not. I usually don't do them, but I was really, really excited. So I did one. Um, so, yeah, that was uh, that was a lot of fun. But now it's a special feeling, especially, like I said earlier, when you can win here, it's it's really hard to do. And, and you have to appreciate those uh, those moments. Oh, you don't know? No. Uh, Dale Inman pulled me aside one day, and uh, he said, hey, you don't see the winner of the Kentucky Derby get off his horse and start beating the shit out of it. So, <laughs> so that's why I don't do burnouts. Well, I didn't do a burnout after one race, and he was like, I like how you don't do burnouts, because, and then he told me that story, and I was like, well, I'm definitely not, he might be mad at me for doing one and breaking our, our rule, but yeah, the Inman quote. Yeah, Thank you. no problem. <laughs> All right, we're going to come up front right here, please, to Stephen. All right. Uh, Stephen Toronto, CBS Sports. Thank you for saying no to equine violence, if I said that correctly. Um, gotcha. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fancy word. Fancy word. Uh, team Joey Logano was on uh, Sirius this past week, and... Um, he was talking about how people at Penske were, you know, frustrated and uh, pissed off that the season hasn't gone the way that the organization would have hoped for. Um, you were the last Penske driver in the playoffs. Now you're on to the round of eight. You've got, you know, a second victory for, for the team. As you enter these, the second half of the playoffs and these last five races, do you feel like this can be a galvanizing force for Penske as an organization that, you know, might be able to propel you to a chance to race for a championship and almost change the narrative from the energy around the team and how this, this year has been? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think it's, it's probably not been the year we wanted, you know, at our, at our group, right? We go from winning the championship with the 22 guys, and then we've struggled a little bit this year overall for speed and, you know, finishes and stuff like that. And, and you know, Joey getting knocked out in the first round was definitely a gut punch. And, um, yeah, it's, it's easy to get down on that stuff, but – you know, it's easy to get fired up about things, too. And uh, our group, you know, is always working towards getting better. You know, I don't think they, they don't dwell on being behind a little bit for a long time. They just go to work, right, and they try to figure out how to be better. And um, and I think a shot in the arm like this, right, it's like, all right, well, let's go, right? We're in the round eight. Let's, uh, we're still in this thing. We still got one in it. You know, let's, uh, let's keep working. And that's their mindset, no matter if we would have won today or not, right? You're always trying to get – uh, you always have our people are always into it right maybe they're frustrated at times that you're not running good but they're always they don't give up right they always just try to be better and just work to solve the problem i mean that's you're going to have down times in racing you're going to kind of be up top and then struggle for speed and then it, it's just a big circle of life really uh, when it comes to that stuff and um you know I, I think this is definitely a good motivator that's for sure fire fire everybody up and usually the last super speed race of the season people try and project performance here to performance in next year's Daytona 500. Uh, so considering not only your victory, but the fact that uh, Austin got a top 10, Joey was very competitive, ran at the front, um, you know, does that give you extra reason to be confident that things are going in the right direction and that Penske will be back at the level they've been? Uh, it's, it's hard to tell, you know, at these places, you know, it's kind of hard to tell where you stack up. Our cars on speedways have always had really good pace. You know, we've always qualified well. Fords are always running good. Rush Yates does a good job on the engines. So uh, it's really hard to tell. I, I really just, Daytona, Talladega, how we run there, I only based it in Daytona, Talladega, right? I, you can't really compare it to the other stuff, uh, but just the speedways. So uh, probably the effort of the, the work we've done to be fast at these places, but it's really all you can compare it to. Thanks, Ryan. Well. All right. I have a couple in the back. Go ahead and raise your hand. There's like four of y'all. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Uh, Ryan, back here. 
Uh, Dalton Hopkins with FrontStretch.com. Ryan, today had 70 total lead changes, which is the most in any cup race since 2011, also here. What exactly is it that made today so competitive, even among all the other next-gen car races at the Super Speedways? Um, I think you saw the third lane more today than normal. Uh, and honestly, it's... It's, it's honestly just a massive fuel mileage race now. I mean, where the stages are, um, how, how, you know, the less time you can spend on pit road, you know, the better. And you gain your track position, you know. So literally the first stint of each stage, everyone's just saving gas. You know, I mean, I ran 50% throttle damn near the whole first stint of each stage just to save gas. So I'm on pit road less amount of time, take less gas, you jump the cars that are using more gas, you know, and, and when like the leaders of the, uh, the bottom lane, the middle lane start doing that, uh, the third lane kind of develops because you have guys that are like, well, screw it. I'm not going to save. I'm trying to get to the front. Um, and so I think that's why you have all these fluctuations and third lane goes, middle goes, it kind of fades. And it's just, it like depends on what, who's leading that lane, who's saving fuel or not. And, uh, it's <laughs> kind of a, it's a weird thing as a driver because, you know, we got back, uh, I think in the second stage, I was like almost the very back of the pack, but I just saved a ton of gas on the bottom and I came out like third in our group because I had to take less gas and that <laughs> propelled us towards the front. So it's a weird kind of game. It's different than what it has been, but everyone's kind of catching on to the save and fuel type situation. And um, that's really what brings the third lane up there a lot. You know, you don't, at the end of the race when everyone's not saving gas and you're pushing hard in the first lane, second lane, the third lane doesn't really go anywhere. Um, so it's kind of a funky, funky deal. But yeah, a lot of passes. That was, it was exciting. Hopefully people enjoyed it. All right. Raise your hand. Okay. Yep. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Christian Coley, kickingthetires.net. Ryan, you were kind of talking about Riley Herbst in the early part of your meet availability. Kind of talking on that. He almost won Talladega in the Truck Series race a couple years ago, and he's shown really good speed in the last few times he's been in a cup car. Kind of talking about looking at the Xfinity Series, he's not done great. You know, kind of speak on what the, the difference between a cup car, truck, Xfinity, you know, I've heard it a lot lately is that just they feel like the process of cup is to go to trucks straight to cup instead of doing Xfinity. Kind of talk about what you think about that opinion. Yeah, it's definitely kind of different than what it used to be. A couple years ago, before this car, you know, uh, Cup cars, Xfinity cars, they drive so much different than what they do or than what they used to. Um, they, I, from what I've heard, they drive a lot like a truck. You know, in kind of my past experiences, they drive a lot like a truck. It's been a long time since I've driven a truck, but uh, they kind of have more of that feel. Um, whereas, you know, you look at a Cup car from 2016, 17, 18, Xfinity car was an awesome learning tool because they were pretty similar race cars. Uh, and they handled the same. So, yeah, it is a little different. Um, I, I think, uh, like, Hosevar has done a good job jumping from trucks to cup because they're very similar to each other without kind of doing the Xfinity route because uh, it's just hard to learn. But experience, race experience is race experience, right? And I think running laps in any type of car is good for you, but uh, you can probably compare the trucks to the cup cars a little bit more now. Uh, but, no, Riley's done a good job. I mean, he's done – he did good at Daytona. You know, a month ago, obviously did good today. Um, I was actually excited when he lined up behind me because I thought, you know, he's a good pusher and he, you know, showed that he pushed in a lot of good spots today and wasn't like hitting in terrible spots, right? So um, that side is uh, was really impressed with, and um, he definitely was a huge factor in keeping us up there. So, uh, but as far as like the series process, yeah, it's it's different from what it used to be, but it's still still good to get laps in whatever you can get laps in. And I think that helps you as a driver, especially if you're young, take what you can get, get laps in, in something and, and just go to these tracks and try to figure out, you know, these tracks and how to approach them as much as you can. All right, Michael, go ahead. Michael Massey, Front Stretch. Uh, Ryan, you've, you've been there as Joey for, you know, a couple of years where he didn't have the most playoff points or the best regular season. And he's kind of snuck his way, you know, perform when it mattered to get to the championship four and, you know, get those championships. Have you learned anything, you know, from watching him be able to do that? Yeah, I, I think 
you know, being teammates with Joey and, and teammates with Brad for a long time was, was really awesome for me to kind of see. I, I admire those guys a lot. Joey is, uh, I mean, you said it perfectly. I feel like he's always really good at um, making a lot out of something, uh, out of little. You know, I feel like they do that all the time. He and Paul Wolf do a great job of that. Uh, Joey's very smart and uh, mentally strong in, in those situations to where he's always looking towards the future. And that's something I've kind of looked at of how he approaches things. Because there's times you're like, man, they're, they're not very good. And they'll go pull something out. And, you know, they're just tough and, and they figure it out. And you're like, man, it's, it's not a coincidence that that happens to them. They think about this stuff and they're they're very mentally strong when it comes to these things and always trying to, to be better. So, uh, yeah, I've definitely learned from him a lot. Um, so it's been nice to have him as a teammate, and um, he's, I mean, one of the best guys out there, uh, that's for sure. I mean, he's won two championships for a reason, and um, it's, it's been fun. To, uh, it's been nice to learn from him and try to acquire some of those things that I think make him really, really good. All right, I think I had one more question in the back. <coughs> Do you have a question? You're good? Yeah, we'll okay, take right we'll take one final question up front. Hey, you sp uh, Brand Strickland, AL.com. You spoke earlier about when you were talking to um, – when you were talking to Byron in the pre-race and him talking about it, it's going to be fun, stress-free. When you ducked down in front of him, did you – I know there's no safe spaces in Talladega, but did you feel safer knowing he might not get squirrely at the end and try to pass you? Not really. I didn't really think about that. You know, I just – the hole was there, and I was able to get down and, and lead a lane, and I knew they were tight. I knew he had Hendrick guys right behind him, so they were going to be pushing a lot. The only thing I was worried about was um, how hard is he going to push me uh, because it's probably not a good thing if I win for, like, the five, right? So that was, like, my only thing that went through my head. I'm like, oh, he didn't lay off me, you know, and uh, stuff like that. And he didn't, you know. I mean, he was committed, and I think me laying back to him kind of got our lane moving to where it bunched up and we just went. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I just try to make the move the – best place I thought possible with the most help and um, luckily he was he was able to give us a good shove there and, and stay tight tight enough to me to where I could squeak ahead of Kevin all right Ryan thank you so much right. thanks for everybody. spending time with us